My name is Dennis Moore, I'm the Assistant Superintendent uh, for Curriculum and Instruction in Persephone, and I'm joined here today with... Sarah Townsend, Supervisor of English Media, Grade 6 through 12. And Allison Caravano, Supervisor of Visual and Performing Arts, K-12, and TV Production, 9 to 12. That was a lot, guys. That's good. Um, we're going to talk to you tonight about uh, curriculum development and kind of just give an overview of what, what goes into that, what that process looks like, and you know what is an actual curriculum. I'm sure we, we everyone hears that term, uh, but you may not have the familiarity with that. So, can you kind of start, guys, by giving an overview of like what is actually in a curriculum, without being so specific that people will um, change the station? Sure. So, for a curriculum document, um, that it acts as a guide for individual courses and it helps teacher with their planning and um, delivering instructional activities. It gives them some guiding questions to help them, um, you know, as they instruct the students, a um, list of assessments, things like that. It also provides a pacing guide so that teachers can plan accordingly a couple weeks out or um, to get their materials in order so that it, it covers what it needs to cover within the appropriate amount of time. We also cover specific strategies for um, students who are English language learners, um, students um, who need specific modifications, um, and students who are um, advanced, gifted, and talented. Is that what we call it? Yes. yes. Um, so a couple strategies in there for to provide guidance for that as well. Nice. Um, when you are creating or revising curriculum, what are your priorities in, in the process? Um, first and foremost, uh, we want to make sure that we include activities that are engaging for students and help them reach success and are differentiated for multiple types of learners. Yeah. Um, we also take a look at um, how the course fits within the overall picture, the big picture of our departments um, and how they support what was what foundation was laid the year prior and where we hope to um, have students prepared to continue on as they move forward. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, and we also want to make sure that we get teacher input when we're developing curricula and the instructional activities and assessments. And um, what is embedded within the curricula is teacher friendly and is something that they can both be unified in, but also make sure that they can add their individual take in the specific instructional activities. It's good to hear you guys talk about the um, effect it has on students and the effect it has on teachers, right? Because we're, we're writing these um, curricula to, for courses that benefit our, our students. We want to make sure the activities in there are engaging and that they're getting the skills that they need. But at the same time, it's a, like a living, breathing document for teachers. And we want to write them in a way that's teacher-friendly. Uh, this unwieldy 300-page document isn't really going to help a teacher. Um, so we, we try to do it in a way there that's concise, that allows um, them to have some flexibility while still meeting the, these overarching goals and, and skills and standards. Uh, next question: um, Why why do we revise curriculum? Well, first off, has it been has it been a busy summer with curriculum it revision? Has, it, it has, has indeed. More for Sarah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the state recently came out with new um, English language arts standards. So I had to go back this summer and update all of the documents um, in English language arts in their courses to ensure that we have the those updated standards. Um, so that's one reason why we have to go back and update curricula. Uh, for the departments that I oversee, we revised some curricula this summer to be um, a little bit broader in in the topics that we cover. For example, we um, revised a curriculum that was for advanced digital photography, and it is now for advanced graphics and media, um, which is all inclusive, and it will have advanced photography, but it also will provide more real world concepts for students who may want to go out and pursue um, that career field. Um, so we've made some modifications there. We have also updated some standards for visual and performing arts as uh, some of our curriculum is being revised to update or to reflect the most recent standards um, and to add new materials or software that we are incorporating into our programs. So a lot of it is is driven by state standards mm -hmm. um, and that compliance factor. A lot of it is um, kind of uh, guidelines we put on our own, right? We have a revision where we're making sure that we 
revisit every curriculum within like a seven year cycle to make sure that we keep everything fresh. Activities, materials are up to date and that um, things are kind of where they need to be for students and teachers. Uh, you mentioned earlier getting staff input. Can you guys talk about what that staff input looks like? Sure, absolutely. So for an example, uh, about two years ago, I had started a committee um, consisting of teachers because I wanted to introduce senior seminar courses. So prior to doing that, I wanted to get input from staff from both of um, the high schools as to what that would look like, suggestions, um, and, you know, get that input. And then I also had um, released a survey to students. So you want to make sure that whenever you're introducing a new course or new program, you're getting input from various stakeholders to make sure that everybody is on the same page and also to foresee any issues um, and be prepared in, in uh, rolling out a new program or a new course. And I had similar experiences the last two years as we were preparing to make some changes with the high school visual arts program. Um, we had teacher input as well as um, we I didn't have a committee. I just had both sides of town working together because um, I wanted voices from both high schools so that everybody was on the same page and uh, that they were working together collaboratively to anticipate what the needs were going to be uh, with this adjustment to the courses that we were being that we were offering, um, and to also start to brainstorm different topics, so that when the time came to revise the curriculum, those who chose to be a part of the revising had um, the input of all of their colleagues before doing so. You're getting staff buy-in is is key, right? I mean, teachers are the ones who who are using these every day. They're ones in the classroom with the kids, so. To have um, so say on what was in that curriculum is is really really paramount. Um, we have amazing teachers at Bristol, as you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, <laughs> they they're the ones who are writing this curriculum. Yeah. So what, so can you talk about their role and your role and like what the conversation is like as they as they prep for that summer curriculum writing? Sure. So typically, um, but as Ali mentioned, we get input from the entire department just to make sure that we, you know, gain. Um, information from all perspectives um and then we sit down with the curriculum writers typically on a pd day to start planning out what the curriculum is going to look like we want to make sure that it also supports the district strategic goals um and we have a curriculum template that they have to use um we have check-ins with the teachers as well throughout the process and then after they submit it we review it make any changes accordingly and then submit it um to dr mulroney for his approval and then for tlc and board approval I don't have anything to add. That was quite thorough. That was it. Yeah. So um, th- I, I I told them before we started recording, this is going to be a concise session. <laughs> and I think we delivered on uh, on that promise. Um, that's kind of what goes into it. Um, we do most of our curriculum work, like the, the hardcore stuff in the summer where we're revising and we're getting that approved. But throughout the course of the school year, we're looking at um, our curriculum. We're talking about it. And sometimes we're talking about things that we're going to revise for, you know, from two years away, um, when a new course opens up, every you know, we, we decide we're going to run something new. You know, we'll start to work on that during the school year and then uh, write that over the summer. So it's a it's a constant process, sometimes initiated by us, sometimes uh, required by the state. But again, the goal is always to get this right for kids, to uh, put our teachers in the best position to be successful to help students. And that's uh, what goes into writing curriculum.